Hi everybody. Today I want to look at a very effective and very easy to learn system for white that can be used against the King's Indian defense and the Grunfeld defense. So positions where black fee and Keto's on the king side. And I have the general structure that we try to aim for when we play this and it's called the Zuckertort system. And basically in a nutshell we fee and Keto our queen side bishop to blunt the effect of our opponent's kingside bishop. And now one really good thing about this opening, especially at club level, is if black kind of plays robotically, like King's Indian defense players tend to do sometimes, they can get in trouble really quick and we can just win a pawn out of the opening and we'll see how often that happens. It's very frequent that we will just win a pawn out of the opening. And so I guess the next question would be, well, who can use this opening? And um, basically, in a nutshell, anybody who opens with d4 and can play knight to f3 on move 2 can use this setup. So Kali system players, uh, London system players who play knight to f3 before they play the bishop to g4, even players who traditionally play d4 and go into a queen's gambit setup, if they play knight to f3, which some people do before they play c4, if they're trying to stop like a, you know immediate stuff with, with e5 and whatnot, then this would be something that they could use as kind of a low maintenance effective setup against the, the King's Indian and the Grunfeld. And so I got the idea to make this video actually in our Discord one of our members was looking for some advice on an opening that they could play. And we kind of we kind of came to the conclusion that the Kali Koltanowski would be a good opening for this player. And so that's not what we'll be covering in this video. But the Kali Koltanowski is not good against the King's Indian. It's not good against the Fianchetto, um, a Kingside Fianchetto. So this would be something very good that this player could use that would fit together well with the Kali Koltanowski and provide a weapon that could be used against these kingside fianchettos. And um, also, I know a lot of players who watch this uh, channel, they um, tend to play the London system, and a lot of people really like Alex Banzia's London system, and I do as well. I think it's the best course on Chessable, and I'm not paid to say that. And uh, that course uses the knight to f3 move order. So this could be um, a system you could use while you're learning all of the kind of more mainline stuff, um, as he recommends to learn, you know, um, other things before you spend a lot of time against the King's Indian. And so he has a good system against the King's Indian as well. Um, this one to me seems a little bit easier if you're going to try to learn it really quickly. Um, and uh, it could be a good thing to, to tie you over until you get to, um, you know, learning either his suggestion that he currently has, or in my case, my idea is, is he's going to um, start, my, my understanding is he's going to put together some material um, against the King's Indian defense where he uses a quick knight to c3 and um, plays like a Jobava London against it. And so my thought is, is instead of learning what he currently has there, I would rather play that eventually in combination with this Zuckertort setup and, and, and just learn how to play them both. But um, I used to play this in the past, so I feel comfortable playing this, this opening for now. And so that's what I'm going to do for now. So that was a little bit long-winded, I realize. So we'll get into the actual opening now. So I'm going to do it. Uh, from a move order for this player who plays the Kali. So they'll play knight to f3 on move 2. And the King's Indian or Grunfeld player will play g6 more often than not. And then the beauty of this Zuckertort is that the Kali player can just continue in developing like they do in the Kali. The difference being is that they play bishop to e2 here. And the reason for that is that the bishop is actually not very well placed on e3 because it rams in to this uh, you know wall of stone that is their fianchettoed 
uh, pawns. And so it's not very easy to attack using a traditional Kali setup. And so for that reason, we're going to put this bishop on e2. And another reason, not to get ahead of ourselves, but another reason is that the King's Indian players will usually play d6 followed by e5 at some point. And it's best not to have our bishop on d3 because you can imagine a situation if they are able to play e4, then they would have a fork on both the bishop and the knight. So we'll continue along here. And normally, black and white will both castle. So, so far, uh, we've made all the same moves as in a Kali system. And the King's Indian player will play d6. And the Grunfeld player will play d5. And we'll come back at the very end and we'll look at how to handle d5. But for now, let's focus on King's Indian setups. And so the key move in this Zuckertort setup is here is where we go and we play uh b3 and we're going to develop our bishop to b2 and basically we are trying to counteract this dark squared bishop of black on g7 this is their beloved bishop in the king's indian and so wh what we're going to do is we're going to put black on some unfamiliar ground here and um, we'll see how this tends to work out very well so what I wanted to do basically is we'll look at, we're going to go over the most common moves that uh, black will play. And so your King's Indian player is generally going to play knight b to d7 here. And they're doing that to support an e5 pawn break. And now we continue along setting up our Zucker tort. And we want to do this b3 in bishop to b2 fairly quickly because if you notice this bishop now x-rays the e5 square and provides additional support to e5. And so I what I want to do is look at the three most common moves that black will play in this position because this is the most common position that we will get. And what I want to do is I want to actually start with the third most common move, which is played quite frequently, and that is e5. And um, you, you're going to like what you see here. So the King's Indian player who play robotically will often play this move. So when players play something like this, when they play e5 here, if you look across the board, you're likely to see something like this. And now they're celebrating they got their e5 breakthrough. And um, yeah, that's, that's about what you'll see. And so let's look at how we handle that. So the way we generally handle these e5 thrusts by black is we just simply take the pawn. And now what's interesting is if you look, the majority, majority of the time in this position, uh, over 60% of the time, they take with the d pawn. And now we have just basically won a pawn for nothing. So if you want to just uh, pause it and look at it and see how you can win a pawn here. We can just take the pawn and bam, exchange everything off and we're just up a clean pawn. So um, then if we look across the board, we probably see something like this. And I've actually seen this look before playing this Zucker tort. And so let's just back up and look at uh, what happens if they don't fall into this trap. So we're going to back up to this point here. Remember when they play e5, we take on e5. We saw that d takes e5 doesn't work. And this will actually come up in other variations too. So I guarantee you, you'll get this in a lot of games. But... If you get somebody who knows what they're doing or somebody who figures this out and doesn't just play like a robot um, over the board, they'll probably play knight to g4, and you can look at less than 20% of the time at club level here um, on the Lee Chess database this is played. But 
let's just go down this line a little bit just so we know what to do if this happens. And remember in our setup um, that we showed on the, on the first screen, generally we wanna play C4 and gain space. So that's what we do here. We just say, well, we're, we're not gonna hold on to that pawn and that's fine. We're just gonna um, gain space and clamp down on the center. And so what'll happen is black will take that pawn with their knight, with the G knight, because they wouldn't wanna just leave it hanging out there in space. We just go ahead and take back and then this would be the most common reply, as you can see, that like 90% of the time practically. And then we can decide what we wanna do here. So there's different ideas. Um, we can play aggressively, we could play our queen to d2, and then have ideas of playing knight to c3, and then actually even f4 and e4, and, and playing very aggressively against these Kings Indian players. Or if we wanted to, um, we could play a little bit, um, you know, more traditionally, we could just put our queen on um, c2, knight to c3, move our rooks to the c1 and d1 squares. Obviously, if we were going with the uh, f4, e4 kind of fire on the board plan, we would keep that uh, f1 rook on f1, and we would bring that a rook over to e1 and try to get them pawns rolling down the board. So, um, but yeah, like, like I said, more often than not, you're actually going to see in this position here, you're gonna see this move here. And so that's what happens on move seven after knight, knight b to d7 um, on move six, if they play e5 right away. So let's go back and look at the other possibilities other than them playing an immediate e5. So we zoom back to that position. They just played knight b to d7. If we look at the second most common move here is actually rook to e8. And this will be another common thing. I won't play the robot video again, but this would be another thing is that the Kings Indian defense player goes for this setup and they put their rook on e8 and their knight their knight on b to d7 to support this e5 break. And so we'll probably see that coming, right? So we just continue. Remember c4 is what we like to play and then we will be just one move away from that structure we had on that front screen. All we gotta do is get our knight on c3, you know, if it works out that way and we've attained that Zuckertort setup. So we place c4, and now what's fascinating is look at this position here. Over about, right around two thirds of the time, once again, they play e5. And if you can look, anything else they play, we'll just play knight to c3. We got a good solid setup and we play some chess. But at the club level, we're gonna see this e5. And of course, what we do is we just we do D takes E, just like last time. And now, amazingly, once again, 70% of the time, they take with the e, with the D pawn. So they'll do D takes E. And uh, I think you probably know what to do here. We play knight takes E5. And now, once again... 70% of the time, you can see over here, the most common move by, by far is knight takes e5. Bam. It's an easy game, I guess. Um, so let's look uh, to see what else could happen here. So instead of taking with the knight, the only move that we got to be somewhat careful of or kind of pay attention to would be knight to e4. And if we go back and look, that's only about 15, 16% of the time. I don't want to get too hung up on statistics, but it's good to point this out because it's just, this thing is so effective against club players. But if they, if they play knight to e4, what we have to realize is that it unmasks an attack on our knight. So this bishop now is attacking our knight. 
And so what we need to do is we need to play knight to d3 to, to uh, move that knight away from attack and to protect this b2 bishop. And we, we would love it if those things got traded off. So, um, you know, if we get something like this, this is great for us. If they just insist on trying to attack down this long dark squared diagonal, we have this, which is beautiful, because here we're just a clean pawn up with a good position. So that is basically what happens if they play rook to e8 on move 6. So right on move 7, sorry, after knight b to d7. So and um, rook to e8, and like you said, the vast majority of the time. If we uh, play c4, they end up playing e5. If they play something else, we just go into our standard setup. So let's look at what's probably the, probably the best move and the most common move, although these two moves we just looked at are very common, would be if after we played bishop to b2, if they, if they play c5. So... Now this is this is important and this is kind of a key thing to know is that we're going to just set up just like we normally do so we're actually going to play c4 here but the important thing to know is that at some point either immediately or down the road they're going to play c takes d more likely than not and the important thing to know is we want to take back with the knight um, we want to just we want to keep this diagonal open so that we can um, exchange off those dark squared bishops. So so we, we basically want to avoid taking back with this pawn and blocking in our dark squared bishop. So an, an, an important thing to know, we won't cover these lines. We're just going to look at the the most common things that happen, but, you may face this c5 move earlier in the game. And just just remember, we just continue with our Zuckertort setup. And the key thing to know is that we take, uh, we meet c takes d with knight takes d. If you remember that, you'll be okay. The first time I played this opening over the board, I, um, I got completely smashed by Alice Lee. Um... I kind of probably knew I was in trouble when I saw her rating and I didn't know anything about her, but I was guessing her age was she was maybe like eight or something or nine. I have no idea, but, um, and I just got completely crushed and I did not, I did not know this rule that you take back with the knight. And, um, I wish I had gotten rid of her dark squared bishop. Let's just say that she found an amazing tactic, moving one of her pieces backwards and then uncorking this weird tactic. I'll try to find the score sheet sometime, and I'd, I wouldn't mind looking at it again now that I've studied this opening a little bit more. But um, yeah, I didn't have the most pleasant outing the first time I played this over the board. Let's just say that. So we play c4, and we just remember we take back with the knight. So in this position here, you can see there's just a hodgepodge of responses from black. I mean, who knows what black will play here since they're likely left to their own resources. But life is good for us. We, we have more space. Black's uh, golden boy bishop here is neutralized by our bishop. So our plan, and we just basically, we can put our, our knight on c3. Um, we can uh, put our, our queen either on d2 or c2, put our rooks here on c1 and d1, and uh, it's just a pretty pretty comfortable position for us to play. And so um, that's like the main, that's what, this, this is the kind of stuff you'll see most often, and that's the beauty, that's why this Zucker Tort is so, so great and easy. So I think what we should do real quickly is just go back and see what happens if on move six, uh, if they play knight to c6 instead of knight b to d7. And we'll be happy to see that. Okay, so right there, if they play knight to c6 instead of knight b to d7, like, sorry, like we just looked at, 
we just continue with our Zucker Tort setup. And what's amazing is if we look at this again, the most common move once again is e5. We take with the e pawn. I'm sorry, we take we take the e pawn with the d pawn. And once again, most common move 65% of the time. D takes C. So let's just uh, see if you remember the tactic here. Bam. So uh, never gets old, and not to me at least. And it hap it, you'll have this happen so much in Blitz you won't believe it. So let's go back though um, in case they don't fall for it. They're not all going to fall for it, but we are going to get a lot of easy wins actually. So let's go back here and look at, let's say we're playing somebody and, well actually, actually let's just look if, let's first look if they take with this knight. And then we'll look at what like a really strong player might play, but it won't be as common that we'll face it. But let's look at what if they take with this knight. Well, same kind of thing. They just can't get enough protection on it. So bam, there we go again. So in this position here, those are the those two most common moves. D takes E and Knight takes E, both losing a pawn. And so if you play a really strong player, what they may do, and this is just one important line to know, what they may do is play Knight to G4 here. And we just, what's the beauty of this is that we, we don't have to memorize much. We just know the setup we're going for. We play our C4 as usual, just grabbing space. That's all we have to remember. And now they'll take with the G pawn. It wouldn't make sense for them to take with the, oh, I'm sorry, the G knight. It wouldn't make sense for them to take with the with C knight and just leave their G knight hanging out in space. So what we do is we take, and then now this is where I think you should pause the video and look and see if you can spot a threat for black. They're threatening a really nice tactic actually. And our position is fine as long as we're aware of this. And the cool thing is, is that we're usually the ones that have the tricks and not them. But in this particular line, there is a trick that we need to be aware of. So um, I'll, let, I'll let you look for it for a second here. All right. So the threat from black is actually just to sacrifice this knight doing a check on f3 which we have to respond to and then black will take on b2 and then take our rook on a1 so you know if let's just say we wasted a move bam we're in trouble so from this position here it's 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 easy to meet we can do it however we want basically we could play queen to d2 putting protection on uh, the bishop, we could do the same thing by playing queen to c2. We could also just play knight to c3, cover up that bishop. But that's just one trick to be aware of. And so we'll look real briefly at the Grunfeld, but there's a very easy thing to play against that actually. But um, I think this is a really, really kind of good um, thing to play for club players against the King's Indian defense. So... Let's just look real quickly at the Grunfeld because we have an easy easy answer for that that just kind of once again just takes them out of their standard way of playing. So the Grunfeld for us will come about when we when we get here in this position here instead of playing d6 like the King's Indian defense player will play, the Grunfeld player will play d5, okay? And we have a beautiful move here, but I think what we should do is we should just kind of look at like a mainline Grunfeld real quick. I'll just flip through it and just kind of show what the idea of the Grunfeld player is. And basically their idea is to get in c5 and kind of dismantle our center and then get a lot of activity with their pieces. They like piece activity. And so... We have a we kind of have a solution for that, but let's just look at like what a mainline Grunfeld would be. Let me just go into it here. So 
you know, the main line would be against the queen's gambit. And we get something like this. You know, a setup something like this. And in this position here, black would play c5, striking out and trying to dismantle. It's a hypermodern thing where they try to, they let us get the center and then they strike at it from the flanks, from the sides and try to dismantle it. And they try to get all kinds of peace activity um, to make up for the advantage that we have in the center. So it's a very sharp opening, a lot of theory. It tends to be very sharp players that play that. And so that's kind of the beauty of this Zuckertort is that our answer when we get in this position, we can actually just play b4 here and put this thing to rest, put this c5 break to rest. And because that's what they're looking for, they're going to be frustrated when they can't actually do that. And um, so if, you find, if you're playing a good player, they'll, they'll probably play a5 here. And we can just simply just, uh, we can just bypass. And um, then what we can do is we kind of just kind of have easy plans here. We're just going to try to um, gain space on the queen side and activate our pieces. So we could just play, um, you know, like knight to d2, set up uh, c4, and then we can develop our dark squared bishop on this diagonal here, either to b2 or to a3. So that would be if we're playing somebody probably probably strong would do that. Um, looks like the most common move is actually c6. And then we could just go about grabbing space here with a4. And then once again, our plan um, is just, you know, this kind of thing. We just try to, um, get queenside action going so and their typical play has been taken away they can't play c5 and so um yeah i think this would be a really good opening for club players especially adult improvers this is what i'm gonna play um until alex gets done with uh the jobava kind of set up against um these king's indian defenses and um you know, I'm thinking he'll be done, you know, updating his course with that. By the time I get to that anyway, I'm taking his recommendation and studying the other stuff, the the kind of more common and the stuff that's going to pay a lot of dividends to know um, now. And so it'll be quite some time before I get around to this, but I'm just going to play this. This is what I played years ago. I would play this. Um, I've had good results with this thing, so I'm just going to stick with it. And I think it's a perfect pairing for somebody who plays the Kali, somebody who plays the London with the Knight to F3 move order. And I mean, even if somebody wanted to play it, that plays the Queen's Gambit decline, you know, the Queen's Gambit, but they play Knight to F3 on move two. So I would strongly consider it. You'll be surprised how many players just play like robots. I've actually had really strong players um, fall into that position where they ruin the pawn, where they lose the pawn by playing E5 when they you know when it's when it's not working for them and then the cool thing is is most of them will get pretty rattled because they kind of realize that they were on autopilot they in a position that they don't understand they're down a pawn we still have um we're still blunting their dark squared bishop so it's just a beautiful thing the zuckertort and uh so props to zuckertort for coming up with this and uh good luck if you uh decide to play this take care